Hello people of the world, it's Chris from IELTS Daily and I'm back with another mock exam video. Are you ready to hear from uh, a native speaker? Today we've got Romy from Australia who is going to be answering questions just like the real test and in previous videos when we've had native speakers some people have asked, well why do you have a native speaker? There are a couple of reasons actually. The first reason is that sometimes native speakers do have to take the test because maybe they studied abroad in a country where English isn't the first language and when they return to their country, maybe they are doctors or dentists, they have to take the IELTS test. So that's one reason. The second reason that we use uh, native speakers is because we want to teach you lots of great features of language, whether that's grammar, vocabulary or pronunciation, you can learn many things and you can learn ideas from native speakers. So, let, without further ado, let's have a look at Romy from Australia. Let's go. Okay, I hope you're ready. I'm just getting prepared and Romy is a university student um, she's interested in rowing. We're going to hear about her hobbies and a little bit about her daily routine. So um, we should start by pressing play. Hello and welcome to this practice exam conducted by IELTS Daily. My name is Maddie and I'm your practice IELTS speaking examiner. The questions in this test are designed to simulate the IELTS speaking test. So let's start. What's your first name, please? Romy. Let's talk about you. Okay, I'm jumping in here. Is this the first time you've seen an IELTS practice test outside? Well, I thought we'd do something different today and do something outside. So you might hear the sounds of birds or the sounds of the, of the wind. Just ignore it. I thought this was a new and innovative, something a little bit different for you. I hope you enjoy it. Do you have a wide circle of friends or just a few close friends? Um, I tend to have a wide range of friends. I don't have many friends that I would consider very close to me. I like to have a lot of people I can reach out to and a lot of different types of friends that I can go to for different reasons. So, yeah. The first point is, and I'm sure you all agree, Romy has fantastic fluency. All her sentences are joined together. She doesn't have any particularly noticeable breaks between the sentences. And this is a really key feature of fluency and coherence and also pronunciation. Did you notice at the end, and this is a very common feature of people who are young today, they often finish a sentence by saying, so yeah. And that is kind of a natural conclusion of a sentence. And these types of um, phrases are often changing over time. And so you might find that people who say, so yeah, now maybe in 20 years won't say that. But it is a good feature of native and natural language. I'm so impressed by Romy's first attempt. She's never done this test before. She doesn't really know about the test. And she's given lots of expansion on her answers and, you know, elaborated a lot. Good job, Romy. And how often do you see your friends? Um, it depends. I... I try to see them as much as possible. It can be very hard to arrange meetings with friends, um, especially when you have like a, such a wide range. I see friends that I do sport with every day almost because I play sport every day. But then other people I don't see as often, but I'm still just as close with when I meet up with them finally. Okay, so in the uh, speaking test, you're going to be marked for pronunciation features. And one of the features is the, your ability to join words and phrases together. And Romy does that so naturally here. Um, I don't remember exactly what she says, but you'll notice that she links all her words together and, and chunks them. And, and this idea of pronunciation chunking is really important in, in the test. And do you have a best friend? Um, I, I wouldn't really say that I have a best friend. I have a couple of friends I would consider myself to be closer with. Um, but I think, I think the word best friend can be very um, set in stone um, and, you know, things change, life is pretty variable. So um, I tend to just know who my close friends are and, yeah, keep it at that. Let's talk about language. Romy used a phrase here. She says it's not set in stone. And the phrase set in stone means it's not fixed or it can't be changed. So when she talks about being not 
not being set in stone. It means it can be changed. So this would be an example of an idiomatic phrase. It's less common and this would be at the band eight or nine level in the uh, vocabulary, the, the, the lexical resource. Really great feature of idiomatic language. Again, wonderful fluency, really impressed by Romy at this stage. Now I'd like to move on to the topic of evenings. What do you normally do in the evenings? Um, if it's a normal day, I'll be exhausted. I'm always pretty tired, so I tend to just relax, have dinner with my family, um, and then I'll try and read a book if I have time, or if it's during university, I usually have to do quite a little bit of study. Um, if it's during the holidays or sometime where I have more time and I'm not as tired, I tend to want to catch up with friends. So I'll go out to dinner in the city or I might watch a movie with friends or go out for food and drinks. It really depends. A couple of things to take away from this part. You may notice that Romy does use the, the phrase tend to a lot. She's probably used it two or three times so far. Now, is that a problem in the test? I don't think so. In the test, examiners understand that you are nervous, you've got this big weight on your shoulders sitting in front of an examiner for the first time. You may repeat words or phrases under pressure. It's a part of being nervous. So this idea of using tend to, tend to a lot is, is, is okay. She had some great grammatical complexity. So she had lots of if sentences. She says, if this happens, then this happens. Loads and loads of really nice grammatical features there. No mistakes so far. All really good, uh, you know, accuracy. So nice. And would you like to do an evening course in a subject? Um, I'm not sure. I've never really considered it. I think, I don't think I would because evenings are a very precious time to me. It's a time that I like to use to do stuff for myself and to relax. So I don't think I would try and fill my evenings with anything else. One of the other features of pronunciation relates to inflection and intonation. And she said something like, I don't think I would. And did you notice how she went up at the end? Go back and have a listen. One of the uh, things the examiner is listening for is inflection and intonation. So going up or going down, depending on the situation. So it could be that if you're making a list or if you are adding something to a sentence, you would need to change your inflection or your intonation. It's a really tricky feature of, of pronunciation and that's what they're listening for at the band nine level. Romy does it perfectly, she does it really naturally and um, just like a native speaker would. Now let's think about the topic of money. Are you good at saving money? No, I'm not good at saving money at all. I tend to, I tend to do a lot of shopping. Um, so I really like finding new brands and new boutiques. And I also love to go out and socialize with my friends. So I find it very hard to save money. Um, and that's something I'm definitely trying to work on. I like this little conclusion at the end. That's something that I'm trying to work on. It's showing the examiner that you've con considered and thought about the answer quite a lot and that you are bringing this particular let's call it a paragraph, it's not a writing paragraph, but this section of language, you're bringing it to a natural conclusion. I, I thought that was a really nice thing. And she also, throughout the test, you might hear Romy say, you know, and a lot of students have asked, can I use the word you in the speaking test? Absolutely, it's totally normal, we've spoken about it before, but you will notice that um, Romy says, you know, sometimes during her speech is really, uh, what, what a native speaker would do in the test. And have you ever made an expensive purchase? Um, yes, I have. I'd say I do a lot of rowing um, and that is a very expensive sport. So I'd say that all my expenses for, for that sport have been very um, large, I would say. And the memberships are always pretty expensive. So I consider it something that is very important to me. Um, and it's obviously like one of my main sports that I do. So I tend to put it at a high priority. Did you notice at this point, Romy looks for content? So this would be an example of content related hesitation. She's not looking for words, she's looking for ideas. She says, um, 
Yes, I have. And did you notice how she slowed down her speech? Because she's trying to buy herself more time. She's trying to think about some, some ideas. Really common for native speakers to do that. And you are welcome to do that during the test. And you can still score about nine in the fluency coherence if you do that. What would you do if someone gave you a large amount of money? Um, it's a very good question. Uh, I'm really not sure. There's nothing that I really would need to spend it on right now. You notice that Romy uses this phrase. That's a very good question. Don't overuse that phrase in the test. If you're the type of person that is looking for these filler phrases to buy yourself some more time at the beginning, don't overuse them. Romy has never prepared for this test before, so she has used this really naturally. But again, she's trying to buy herself some more time. I'd like to think that I would donate some of it, um, as everyone, everybody would. Um, I think um, it would really help for my savings account, um, go towards saving up for a house in the future, or just towards general day-to-day -to -day life. I love this phrase, I'd like to think that. I would like to think that. I'd like to think that. It's showing this hypothetical situation. What would happen if you received a large amount of money? Well, I'm putting myself in that position and I'd like to think that I donate some of it. Nice language. Part two. In the next part of the test, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to speak for one to two minutes. You'll have one minute to think about what you want to say and I'll give you a pen and some paper to make notes if you want. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yes. Here is your paper and here is your pen. You have one minute to prepare. Thank you. Now, I'd like you to talk about a time when you were disappointed by someone or something. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Sure. And start speaking now. Um, I used to get pretty disappointed in my sisters. Um, every time I would come home and they would have um, trashed my room or taken stuff out of the drawers or st stolen my clothes. Um, it used to be a very top, a very um, touchy subject in my household because clothes would always go missing and I would always be very disappointed and angry and wondering where my favourite clothes were. And I think that coming to college um, has made me realise how much I value them as sisters and how much I really don't don't mind that they steal my clothes anymore or that they say things that sometimes let me down. Um, I think that family has become such an important value to me um, and I have realised that because I have moved away from home now and I now find myself missing them a lot and so in reality I've realised it's very much not a big deal at all. Um, this doesn't seem to happen as much now. I think it's a, a massive issue of communication um, and now I really trust my sisters and don't mind if they ask me to borrow something. Um, so yeah, I think my mum to get, tries to get involved as well, which makes it even m more of a bigger deal. Um, but really when I look back on it, I can, I can see that it's not a big thing at all. And I really, um, and just, it's just made me realise how much um, people tend to fight over such small things and get disappointed in people for things that they really didn't have a negative, um, that they really didn't do intentionally to hurt you or to put you down or make you feel bad. So I think that's a really important thing to realise. Wow, didn't Romy do an amazing job with her fluency? She didn't stop talking. She talked more about her answers. She talked about how she felt. She even changed the time of, of, of when she was talking about. Just want to talk about some of the language she used. The first piece of language was touchy subject, and that's a really high level piece of language. If, a, if you talk about a touchy subject, it's a subject that maybe makes you emotional or makes you angry. Good word. Then she said um, the pronunciation she talked about um, and making me angry and she changed the inflection and the intonation at the end. Go back and listen to how she puts emphasis on that and that's a natural feature of pronunciation. She used the language trashed my room so she talked about her 
sisters coming home and trashing her room, which means to make a mess or to take things out of the drawers and create a problem in the room. And then she realized that she didn't reach the time limit. So she talked about what happened in the past. And then she said, well, that doesn't happen anymore. So she wanted to find some more language to be able to use to make the time go for longer and did a really great job at that. You may have heard as well that she did say, so yeah, um, again, which was a, a feature of language in there. I want to stay on the topic of feelings. Is it important for people to share their honest opinion about things? At times, yes. Um, I think honesty is one of the most important virtues. I think that um, being honest with someone helps you build that trust and that communication. And I think that I always feel closer to someone when they've shared or they've spoken honestly to me. But I also do think at times it can be better to tell a little white lie, um, especially in the case where it's going to hurt someone else's feelings or where it's really not necessary for them to know um, and it will just ricochet and have other effects and just impact everyone around. I loved Romy's answer here. So much detail, so much elaboration does a wonderful job with a fluency, grammatical range, so many grammatically complex sentences, nice features of language. Um, really, really, really wonderful piece of work. Is there a good way to give constructive feedback to someone about something? Yes, I definitely think there is. And this is something that I've learned about in one of the courses I'm studying at uni too, which was about um, sports coaching. So how we can give constructive feedback and help our students to learn, um, to learn from their mistakes. And I think it's really important when giving constructive feedback to say something positive first, um, to make sure you're not too negative and that you don't have a negative tone to your voice, that you're happy um, and that you're just generally trying to help them. You wanna give off the vibe that you're just trying to help them and not that you're trying to put them down. I think it's one of the worst things when someone's telling you something and you know they're just trying to let you down and trying to make you feel bad about yourself. So I always try and start with something positive and then say, how about we try this? Or how about next time you, you do this? Um, I think always phrasing it as a question is also a more sensitive way to approach the topic. In pronunciation, there's a feature of, of language which is called the weak form. The weak form is when we don't put the stress on the, the word. And if you go back and listen to Romy, she very often uses the weak form of the sound to, um, to see, to do. We don't say to see or to do, we say to see, to do. And she uses this weak form with this sound called the schwa, the a uh sound, the t t t, to see, to do, to watch, to sing. And you will notice that she uses the weak form really well. And what can people learn from feelings of disappointment? Um, a lot. I think in terms of my sport, I've been disappointed in results a lot of the time. I think disappointment can act as motivation very easily. Um, it can be turned and manipulated into many things. Um, but I think if you always try and manipulate it a positive way um, and try and use it to your advantage, try and use it to motivate or to change something that you would have liked, um, you wouldn't have liked um, to be said about yourself. Um, I think it can always be used in a good way. Thank you. That is the end of this practice IELTS speaking test. Thank you very much to Maddie and to Romy. Um, I don't know what you think, but this was a really wonderful example of how a person can naturally answer questions. The range of vocabulary, the range of grammatical structures. And I know that for many of you who are trying to reach the band seven, Maybe this feels like it's unachievable. Maybe it feels like you're not going to get to Romy's level. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you really want to get to Romy's level, you can. It takes a bit of hard work. But for most of you, you're not actually trying to reach Romy's level. But what you can do is take away many of the things that she does really well in her test and try to apply them to yours and learn the, the, the features of language that Romy is using. So what would I give Romy's score? Well, it probably won't surprise you that for all four sections, Romy is going to score nine. 
and we'll talk about them each individually. Fluency and coherence, she explained, she gave reasons, she didn't stop speaking, she didn't have any hesitation looking for language. It was all extremely natural and this word natural is very important. For lexical resource, again, she had a wide range of vocabulary. She used words like trashing my room or it's not set in stone. You don't have to use lots of them throughout your speech, but you do have to demonstrate that you understand how to use idiomatic phrases and less common phrases, phrasal verbs, all of those um, high level words. Good job. Band nine. Grammatical range and accuracy, I didn't hear any problems with accuracy. She made um, a good use of a wide range of different types of com complex structures. So that we'll talk about the range of language. Um, if sentences, when sentences, that sentences, which sentences, all of these um, subordination sentences. Good job. Band nine. And pronunciation. Romy was effortless, she was easy to understand, she had good chunking, she had good inflection and intonation. So many things you can learn from Romy here, a band nine. I hope you took away lots of things from Romy's speech here. I think she did a wonderful job and this video serves as an example of, of learning ideas. Learning what other people do and how they do it is a great way for you to learn. I'm a teacher so I can guide you. I'm not going to be able to fix all of your individual mistakes and it's your job to go away and watch these videos and try and take something away from them and say, I'm going to try and do this throughout my next speaking test. So thank you on behalf of IELTS Daily for coming back and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your ideas in the comments uh, section below. If we made a mistake in the video, then I'm sorry. I don't think that we're all perfect. So please, um, if you can give some feedback on how you think Romy did, how she could improve if, she, if you think that she didn't do well in a certain area, we'd love to hear those particular pieces of feedback back from you. Don't forget, after this, you can watch the entire Romy speaking practice test without any interruptions from me. This is a great opportunity for you to go, sit, listen, Maybe put it on while you are um, sitting and relaxing. If you're on the bus going to work or to school or to your college, please put it on and have a listen. Thanks for joining. I hope you guys are doing really well in your IELTS preparation. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this practice exam conducted by IELTS Daily. My name is Maddie and I'm your practice IELTS speaking examiner. The questions in this test are designed to simulate the IELTS speaking test. So let's start. What's your first name, please? Romy. Let's talk about you. Do you have a wide circle of friends or just a few close friends? Um, I tend to have a wide range of friends. I don't have many friends that I would consider very close to me. I like to have a lot of people I can reach out to and a lot of different types of friends that I can go to for different reasons. So yeah. And how often do you see your friends? Um, it depends. I, I try to see them as much as possible. It can be very hard to arrange meetings with friends, um, especially when you have like a, such a wide range. I see friends that I do sport with every day almost because I play sport every day. But then other people I don't see as often, but I'm still just as close with when I meet up with them finally. And do you have a best friend? Um, I, I wouldn't really say that I have a best friend. I have a couple of friends I would consider myself to be closer with, um, but I think, I think the word best friend can be very um, set in stone um, and you know things change, life is pretty variable. So um, I tend to just know who my close friends are and yeah, keep it at that. Now I'd like to move on to the topic of evenings. What do you normally do in the evening? Um, if it's a normal day, I'll be exhausted. I'm always pretty tired, so I tend to just relax, have dinner with my family, um, and then I'll try and read a book if I have time, or if it's during university, I usually have to do quite a little bit of study. Um, if it's during the holidays or sometime where I have more time and I'm not as tired, I tend to want to catch up with friends, so I'll go out to dinner in the city or I might watch a movie with friends or go out for food and drinks. It really depends. 
And would you like to do an evening course in a subject? Um, I'm not sure. I've never really considered it. I think, I don't think I would because evenings are a very precious time to me. It's a time that I like to use to do stuff for myself and to relax. So I don't think I would try and fill my evenings with anything else. Now let's think about the topic of money. Are you good at saving money? No, I'm not good at saving money at all. I tend to, I tend to do a lot of shopping. Um, so I really like finding new brands and new boutiques. And I also love to go out and socialize with my friends. So I find it very hard to save money. Um, and that's something I'm definitely trying to work on. And have you ever made an expensive purchase? Um, yes, I have. I'd say I do a lot of rowing um, and that is a very expensive sport. So I'd say that all my expenses for, for that sport have been very um, large, I would say. And the memberships are always pretty expensive. So I consider it something that is very important to me. Um, and it's obviously like one of my main sports that I do. So I tend to put it at a high priority. And what would you do if someone gave you a large amount of money? Um, <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, I'm really not sure. There's nothing that I really would need to spend it on right now. I'd like to think that I would donate some of it um, as everyone, everybody would. Um, I think um, it would really help for my savings account, um, go towards saving up for a house in the future or just towards general day-to-day -day life. Part two. In the next part of the test, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to speak for one to two minutes. You'll have one minute to think about what you want to say and I'll give you a pen and some paper to make notes if you want. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Yes. Here is your paper. And here is your pen. You have one minute to prepare. Thank you. Now I'd like you to talk about a time when you were disappointed by someone or something. Remember you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can sure. We'll start speaking now. Um, I used to get pretty disappointed in my sisters. Um, every time I would come home and they would have um, trashed my room or taken stuff out of the drawers or st stolen my clothes. Um, it used to be a very, top, a very um, touchy subject in my household because clothes would always go missing and I would always be very disappointed and angry and wondering where my favourite clothes were. And I think that coming to college um, has made me realise how much I value them as sisters and how much I really don't, don't mind that they steal my clothes anymore or that they say things that sometimes let me down. Um, I think that family has become such an important value to me um, and I have realised that because I have moved away from home now and I now find myself missing them a lot and so in reality I've realised it's very much not a big deal at all. Um, this doesn't seem to happen as much now. I think it's a, a massive issue of communication. Um, and now I really trust my sisters and don't mind if they ask me to borrow something. Um, so yeah, I think my mom tried to get, tries to get involved as well, which makes it even m more of a bigger deal. Um, but really when I look back on it, I can, I can see that it's not a big thing at all. And I really, um, and just, it's just made me realize how much um, people tend to fight over such small things and get disappointed in people for things that they really didn't have a negative, um, that they really didn't do intentionally to hurt you or to put you down or make you feel bad. So I think that's a really important thing to realise. Thank you. I want to stay on the topic of feelings. Is it important for people to share their honest opinion about things? At times, yes. Um, I think honesty is one of the most important virtues. I think that um, being honest with someone helps you build that trust and that communication. And I think that I always feel closer to someone when they've shared or they've spoken honestly to me. But I also do think at times it can be better to tell a little white lie. 
um, especially in the case where it's going to hurt someone else's feelings or where it's really not necessary for them to know um, and it will just ricochet and have other effects and just impact everyone around. Is there a good way to give constructive feedback to someone about something? Yes, I definitely think there is. And this is something that I've learned about in one of the courses I'm studying at uni too, which was about um, sports coaching. So how we can give constructive feedback and help our students to learn, um, to learn from their mistakes. And I think it's really important when giving constructive feedback to say something positive first, um, to make sure you're not too negative and that you don't have a negative tone to your voice, that you're happy. Um, and that you're just generally trying to help them. You want to give off the vibe that you're just trying to help them and not that you're trying to put them down. I think it's one of the worst things when someone's telling you something and you know they're just trying to let you down and trying to make you feel bad about yourself. So I always try and start with something positive and then say, how about we try this? Or how about next time you, you do this? Um, I think always phrasing it as a question is also a more sensitive way to approach the topic. And what can people learn from feelings of disappointment? Um, a lot. I think in terms of my sport, I've been disappointed in results a lot of the time. I think disappointment can act as motivation very easily. Um, it can be turned and manipulated into many things. Um, but I think if you always try and manipulate it a positive way um, and try and use it to your advantage, try and use it to motivate, or to change something that you would have liked, um, you wouldn't have liked um, to be said about yourself. Um, I think it can always be used in a good way. Thank you. That is the end of this practice IELTS speaking test. Thank you.